Today, there are many monks, senior ones. So I cannot spend a lot of time with you. I need to spare some time for the monks. You have listened to a lot of Dhamma. It's time that you practice it. No one can help you achieve the enlightenment. It's only you who can do it yourself. Sustain, maintain the five precepts. It's, it's the most important that you maintain the five precepts. And then every day, set aside some time for the practice. No matter how good, you need to do the formal practice. Find an object or two, no more than three. You can use your breathing, you can use the mantra butto, or you can do both breathing and mantra. Because sometimes just observing the mind alone is not enough. Or you can do breathing in, put, and counting one, breathing out. Say toe, cut in two. But if you have too many objects as your base, you will be too scattered. It's all over the place. Don't have too many. Study until you find yourself through mind. Because the mind is important for the practice. The mind is good or bad, you're good or bad, it totally depends on your mind. Happy, unhappy depends on your mind. Whether you get the enlightenment or whether you go to hell, it depends on the hell, on your, the mind. It's the mind that differentiates you. It's the karma that the mind come, uh, practice, it's the directions that you head to. If you get to understand the mind, then that's when you get the Dhamma. The mind likes to wander itself, likes to observe and forget about yourself. Listen to something else and forget about yourself. Escape to smell, to taste, to feel the sensual touch, and you forget about yourself. Start to do mental formation to think, and then you forget about yourself. Even when you practice, for example, when you being mindful of the breathing, your mind gets attached to your breathing and forget about yourself. So you don't get to be observing your mind clearly. What does it mean by observing the mind clearly? Be careful. Don't make it too clear. Overstimulation to have a very too much clarity of the mind is not right either. That's it, that's the practice. It's not about being empty. The best mind is the natural, normal mind. Try not to imagine yourself that being an Arahant is something else. An Arahant is the most normal, natural person. It's us who are actually not normal, not natural, because we have defilements. The mind of an Arahant is actually the most normal, most natural mind. We, our minds, are actually are subject to defilements, so it's actually not normal. When you get to understand, fully understand the mind, then that's when you get to mind. If your mind disappears, you wonder yourself, then you lose dhamma. Wholesomeness and wholesomeness, everything happens at the mind. The enlightenment occurs also at the mind. So when you actually achieve the clarity about your mind, that's when you get dhamma. The mind actually has one 
nature. It always wanders off in the way that it's used to wandering off. So, for it's been a long time we're so used to forgetting about ourselves and our mind. So whenever there's something happening outside, we become more interested in something ex outside. For example, if there's a beautiful, you see a beautiful woman walking down, your mind wanders off to see the woman. Your mind's actually seeing the woman, but you don't see the mind wandering off to the woman. Or when you see a mad dog running towards you, you see the dog and then you start to run, but you don't observe the mind that becomes scared of the mad dog. Or when you hear something, you hear a music, you like the song, then you pay attention to the song. The mind becomes attached and follow the song. Have you ever seen that your mind follows the sound of a music? But then the mind actually follows follows the sound of the song. However, it forgets that you become not unaware that the mind has wandered off to follow the song, the music. So the mind's used to getting interested in something external, outside, all the sensual contacts that come to our mind. We pay more attention to these contacts than our own mind. We are not used to being mindful of ourselves. We are used to being absent-minded. We always forget our body and mind. When we drive, someone cut in front of you, you become angry. You don't observe that you're getting angry. But we actually try to see where does the other car go and we want to go and cut in front of them as a revenge. If you cannot find them, and you will have to memorize the license plate number and then you vow to find this car again in order to get a revenge. See, your mind actually keeps paying attention to the outside world. But actually, when you're angry, if you come back and pay attention to be mindful of the anger in your mind, and then you see that the anger arises and falls away. Everything arises and falls away. The life gets so hectic and crazy and mad just because the mind struggles to escape from the sufferings. It's that simple. If you see happiness is also temporary, Sufferings also temporary, you know that there's no need to struggle. There's no need to suffer and struggle. Everything is temporary happiness, unhappiness. And the mind becomes equanimous about happiness and, and the suffering. Anything, it could be good, bad, happy, unhappy. If the mind doesn't struggle to fabricate further, then you come back and get the peace, the tranquility of the mind. But this is not it. But this is still about being peaceful at the mind. But the true Nipine, you have to let go of the mind itself as well. As long as you still maintain the mind, this is still not the end of the journey. There are many levels of Dhamma. First, you have to get to understand to be mindful of the mind first. When you observe the body, and you observe the mind, you see how the mind moves. Sometimes happy and happy, and then finally you see the true mind, the consciousness. Some, the consciousness that we believe that is so special. It's still part of the five aggregates and it's also still the sufferings. When we see that we have to let go, then we see that even the mind, the consciousness, is also subject to the three characteristics. It's the wrong view about the mind. And then even the mind itself will be destroyed. And that's when you fully see the four noble truths fully. When you see the sufferings totally, then you will get the enlightenment. When you understand it, Eightfold Path, 
then that's when you get to the achieve the enlightenment. So it's like when you study in the course of study, you want to achieve the PhD. When you study elementary school, you focus on what you have to study in the elementary school. You don't need to worry about your PhD when you study in elementary school. So walk through your steps. So when we start, all we, we need to be mindful about is your own body and mind. And then slowly you get to see the truth about the body and mind. Understand the abstract and the tangible. The mind and the matter, if you understand it, and then the next step, then you will understand that the mind see the mind fully, and that's the step when you fully get to the enlightenment. So when the mind see the mind clearly, it's actually, it's the final step that you get to understand the Eightfold Noble Path for the full final step of enlightenment. When you let go of the five aggregates, you understand that actually the whole world is about the mind and the matter. When you let go of the five aggregates, that's the end of it. So, the first step, be mindful of your body and mind. Second, you allow the mind to be observed the truth about your body and mind. And then the third one is just to be wise about the wisdom, about the mind itself. And then that's the final step, the end of the sufferings, is the final termination of the sufferings, because the mind itself is suffering. So, at this moment, what do we have to do? So the first step is to be mindful of your body and mind. That's the beginning. The awareness about your own body and mind within yourself is the most important. Don't let it escape anywhere. Be mindful of yourself, your body, your mind. When it escapes, where does it go? It's through the sight, the sound, the smell, the touch, and the mind itself, the mind itself. So there are six doors for the cravings. The cravings for the sound, for the sight, for the smell, for the taste, for the touch. And then also for the phenomena that you are happy about. The six doors. So let the mind come back to your own body and mind. Learn about your body and mind. So when the mind is with yourself, with your own body and mind, it means it doesn't wander off, it doesn't become absent-minded. How do you make the mind stay with yourself? You can choose a mantra, good to keep breathing, and then be mindful when the mind moves away, when the mind wanders off. When the mind wanders off to see, to hear, to listen, to smell, to taste, when the mind wanders to the breathing, then you'll be mindful. When the mind escapes to the Buddha. So it's simple. It just comes down to being mindful of the mind. So when the mind stays with yourself, and then you can start to allow the mind to understand the truth about the mind and the matter about the body. When you see you see, the money is all sufferings. It's something that being observed. It's not you. It's non-self. The mental formation, happy, unhappy, everything is not you. It's the mind. Mental formation, it's everything. It's temporary. It's always being oppressed to change. And it cannot be controlled. So these are the three characteristics. So first, until you understand and get the mind, and for understanding your own body and mind, that's the biggest lesson. So that's the study of the mind. So 
The first one is the understand of the morality. That's when you understand the precepts that are needed, and then you understand about the mind, which is jadasika. And then the third level is the study for the wisdom. So you understand the truth of all the phenomena that arise in your mind and body. So the cultivation of wisdom, there are many levels to it. But first, in the first step, that you need to come back to your body and mind. So first, start picking an object. So try to stay with the object. And there are two ways that might escape from the object that you choose. So first way is to as the mind get lost in your thoughts, it wanders off to somewhere else. The second way is when the mind is over focusing on the object itself. So, for example, if you're moving your hand, either your mind wanders off to something else in your thoughts, or the mind is over focusing on the hand. So, do you understand what it means by being mindful of your body and mind? It's very important. It doesn't sound scary. It doesn't sound too fancy, too exciting. It doesn't sound like anything beyond simple words that you just you stay with yourself. You don't forget about your body and mind. When the mind is deluded, when the mind forgets about your body and your mind, that is when you deluded, when you have delusions. Thirty years ago, when I went to study with a lot of masters, ever since I was seven years old, sixty years ago, it's exactly sixty years ago. It's the first time I went to understand a concentration practice with Master Long Pao Li. Wow, it's very fast. Well, suddenly, it's sixty years ago, and until when I was twenty-nine years old, is the Buddhist era twenty-five, twenty-five. That's when I went to study with Master Long Pudun. That's when I start to understand, to learn, to study about the mind. It didn't take me long. Step, step by step, I start to understand my own mind. First, I understand that there is no self. There is no me. Whenever there's any cravings arise, when his mind start to get attached to something, hold on to something, then the mind start to suffer. When the mind doesn't have the cravings, doesn't have the desire, it doesn't hold on or grab onto something. There's no suffering. So and then next level, I understand more and more. Everything we follow the steps that are needed to understand for each step. But the first step is the most important thing to have. Mindfulness of your body and mind. When you can observe the body, then observe the body. If you can observe the feelings, then observe the feelings. At any instant, it could be anything, because finally, it actually comes down to how the mind moves. Even though you observe feelings, everything comes back to the mind as well, because the mind is the observer, and it comes back to how the mind moves. The sufferings it can be ended. By understanding the truth of the mind, you have to practice. So remember, keep the five precepts: practicing your body and mind. Find an object, and then be mindful when the mind wanders off. You forget about the body and mind, or when the mind goes and get attached into the object of the practice itself. When the when you have the stable observer as your mind, then then you can start to cultivate wisdom. The cultivation of the wisdom. When you have the right mind, the right smarty is actually simple. It's the hardest thing is to get the right mind, to have the right mindfulness. Before I met Mumpudun, I had the correct mindfulness already, but I didn't know the next step. And I was taught to understand, to see the mind movement, and then it was simple. It was easy. When I see a lot of masters, a lot of them call me the knower. They didn't even know my name because they know that I was actually the one who's aware, who's mindful of myself. But I wasn't very fluent in the wisdom cultivation practice yet. 
Okay, you want to submit the homework. You have limited time. People who stay at the temple, you're still here tomorrow, so keep your questions for tomorrow. So who comes from the distance? Number 29, where did you come from? <laughs> 15, 16, 28, 19, 22. Number 1, number 8, number 24. Number 15. She would like to know whether her mind is having is becoming an stable observer yet. So when you have a stable observer, it would not be hard, it would be soft. If you have a hard, if it's feel stiff, that means it's not a correct stable observer. When the mind is being a stable observer, it's actually agile. It's gentle and soft. You have improved. Number 16. Uh, she is Chinese. I have some, some power to heal my friends. But you like to know how she how her practice is. If you would like to have the power to heal others, it's good, but it's not the best thing. Master have taught us that it's best to really improve yourself first and then you can help others. Currently your mind is not at the base, it's not at the home base. So try to practice and bring yourself, your mind back to the body and mind. Can you feel that your mind is somewhere else? It's kind of broad, it's outside. You don't have the right concentration yet. So reverse your practice, come back to your own body and mind. Be mindful of your body moving, observe your mind moving around. Be mindful of your body and mind. If the mind escapes to your thoughts, then be mindful of it. Can you observe it? When the moment you become aware that you lost in your thoughts, then the mindfulness arises inside. Now you lost in your thoughts again. So can you observe the reality? Don't try to force it to stay still. Let it work naturally. If it's going to wander off to your thoughts again, it's okay. Be mindful that it wanders off to the thoughts. When you're thinking, especially people from China, when you're thinking, your mind likes to move to the left. Be mindful. So be mindful when it moves away. The right, the correct mind uh, concentration is something that occurs and stay inside your body and mind. You keep observing the truth about your body and mind until one day you start to let go and not holding on to the body and mind when the mind understand the truth. Keep practicing when you're not suffering from the mind, it's because it's not suffering from the cravings. Number 28. He has two questions. So when he's observed um, naturally, freely, sometimes the mind moves. And sometimes the mind wanders off, sometimes the mind just go right into the object or phenomena and hold on to it. Have I improved? Yes, you have improved. Can you observe that your mind is currently somewhere else? 
now you're over concentrating so it's actually staying still more than naturally let it be natural don't interfere with it don't interfere with your mind if you're actually interfering and make it still just be mindful of that too you cannot hope that it will automatically become good 100% it will slowly improve over time can you observe that it's actually moving back and forth now you're lost in your thoughts now you can see you did you see that a moment ago you saw that your mind wanders off to the thoughts it's like one moment the light switches switch on inside that you become awake keep practicing whatever that you're doing is very good that's good number 19 the second question so when the mind when you use the object is around something around my chest and can observe around my chest but don't let your mind sink into whatever that's inside of the chest don't hold on to it and not allowing it to sink in either don't do it either way do one way or the other okay number 19 Could you show your show your card? อืมคําถามคือเขาจะสามารถพบกับความอิสระได้ยังไงคะรู้สึกว่าเขาติดกับอยู่ในจิตใจตัวเองในอารมณ์ของตัวเองเพราะว่าพ่อแม่ของเข
And then it's just like you emancipate yourself from being the slave to all these desires and say cravings. The cravings are the worst thing. It can boss you around all day, all night, do this and do that, all the time. And it's a very clever boss. It keeps bossing you around without you realizing that you're actually the slave to their orders. You keep following their orders. So, for example, it tells you to find a tasty food, and then we go and look. And so, once we satisfy, it, and then you, they give you a little small bit of happiness, and then they will start ordering you to go seek something else again. But if you don't do it, it will be, will be subject to sufferings, to punishment from the cravings, from the mind. It's the cravings and the mind. It's actually the thing that makes you lose the freedom. The way to destroy it is simple. It's just to understand the truth of your body and mind. Understand more and more. The more you understand it, the cravings will disappear. And then that's when you have the true freedom. You will live with reasons, not because you, your life is being driven by reasons, not desires. That's how you have to practice. And then that's when you get the freedom. That's good. But it's very rare that people ask about freedom. Every time, people, most of the time, people ask about peace and tranquility. Tranquility is not important as much as the freedom. It's good. You ask about the freedom. Number 22. So now you have practiced much better. That's good. You have improved a lot. Don't try to make it still. Don't try to make your mind still. Can you see? You're still trying to make it still, try to force it to stay still. <laughs> she said she's afraid that she's trying to maintain it too much, and in, I would not be mindful of the movement. So, no pause it. You actually a lot more naughty than you actually being trying to be right now, trying to portray yourself right now. Just be mindful, let it be natural. Just be mindful. Everything comes and goes. So she asks beyond what she's doing right now, what else do you have to do? So no Paul said. Just be mindful, don't get stuck in the stillness. Don't try to make it quiet. Number one. Where are you, number one? There. Send the microphone. Can I ask for a chance for another nun? Is the nun willing? <laughs> Don't force her. You have to let go and don't believe your own opinions too much. Just be mindful. See the body working, see the body aging, see the body getting sick, and see the body dying. The mind will have sufferings and happiness. Just keep observing like this. This is the way to cultivate this too. Just let the mind stay with yourself. Don't let the mind wander out. Just keep practicing the way I explain to you. Next one. She wonders. Has been observing my body for a long time. So I said you have to have the mind that is being observer. Don't try to you know, sing into the body, sing into the feelings. Your, your mind is not yet stable. The observer is not yet stable. So find that object. Could be the breathing, could be Maputo, could be walking. But see, the mind moves around. Do this until you do this well, and then your cultivation will be easy. And uh, wisdom cultivation will be easy. Otherwise, your mind is too scattered. Can you see that your mind likes to get lost in your thoughts all the time? Just be mindful. 
no matter how hard yourself, if you go somewhere else, you know, some the time you've lost the new thought. Next one, what is the number? Number one, where is number one? Okay, for you, you don't have to ask the question. You are very scattered. Your mind is very, very scattered. So try to do concentration practice. Don't allow it to get lost in the thoughts, different thoughts. Just keep chanting Puto. Keep chanting Puto naturally, easily. When the mind wanders off to something else, just be mindful of that. Just keep doing this until you come back and submit your homework next time. Your mind is too scattered at the moment. Number eight. Where are you? Okay, you're looking good. Can you notice that you have changed? Don't try to control and make it still. Don't try to preserve it that it has to be good all the time. There's no need to do that. Let it allow it to change. Be happy, unhappy, good and bad. Can you see that your mind is never constant? Just keep allowing it to grow. Number 24. Hello, I'm from Google. Practice and object being my mind, just the way my mind suggested. So, no process. So, keep observing your mind. When actually, when you have enough the correct concentration, you have your mind somewhere else, it feels like you're observing it actually. Your mind's outside. Your mind's not back in your, inside your body and mind. Yet. So, come back to yourself. Maybe the mind moves. Then be mindful of it. Can you see that your mind is not at the home base at all at the moment? Can you see? Yes, that's good. It's actually, it's kind of like spread out time. Just be mindful that your mind is not at the base. Don't pull it back. When it comes back, it will come back on its own. If you pull it, you feel stuck. You feel congested. Just keep practicing when your mind is staying with your body and mind comfortably without having to force it. And then you will observe that something that arises, you notice it naturally when you don't have the right concentration, and you will not be able to notice it because it's too scattered. And then otherwise, you're scattered all day. You won't see it rises and falls. So then you have to be mindful, and then it lost. And it's mindful that it's lost again. Okay, number two. Okay, that man has already submitted homework. Number three. Did you come from the same friend from the same temple? She says, I come from the Soto. I have come down to visit my mother. Well, two days ago, I was cooking. And I was concentrating on the cooking. And when I finished cooking, I observed my thoughts very clearly, jumping from one thought to another. And then I felt the suffering so bad. So I walked outside the house, and then I kept observing the thoughts that was jumping around. But I suffer from observing the feelings from the story. I suffer so much until I felt like I couldn't handle it anymore. And then I walk inside and then I turn on the tama and I listen. They said it's just to let go, so I let go and then my sufferings disappeared. And I come back to my object. So start to do the meditation practice. And then I listen. To the five aggregates of the consciousness, the fifth one. And then my body felt like I was getting a, a slight electrocuted. And then around 5 a.m., I started to have the brightness. And it's not like it used to be, but it was going into the concentration and staying there like that. 
feeling a little smooth. And I felt that the five of you guys are spreading outside. You're not actually putting down the five of you guys. You, okay, bring your mind back to your body and mind first. Your mind scattered at the moment. It's not at a home base. It's not a being a stable observer. Don't believe in any phenomena that arise. It's not the results. It's actually your mind outside. A little lost outside. Come back to your body and mind first. So should we come back to my breathing? So don't let go of the concentration practice. Keep keep the concentration. Keep the breathing. Otherwise you'll be scattered outside like this. Actually I used to have a rule. I used to have a rule that if you keep practicing with another school, don't come back and try to study here. I would actually try not to study. So if you want to follow one master, please follow one master. Okay, next one, number four. Okay, it looks good. Can you see that your mind is like a monkey? It moves, it runs around. That's good. You see it? See it working. Yeah, it uh, fabricates good, bad, happy, unhappy feelings in your mind. Just keep following. Just keep following. Be mindful of those. And you will see that everything that arises will fall away. Whatever that you're doing, it's already good. Just keep doing more of this. However, currently, can you see that it's not at the base? It's a little outside. It's kind of scattered outside. Don't pull it back. Just be mindful that it's not at the base. Just be full, mindful that it's outside. Just keep coming back to your object. It will come back to the body and mind on its own. And don't try to fix it to stay inside either. Let it work. Let it do the working on its own. Whatever that you're doing, it's good. But you just don't have the right, correct concentration yet. It's still a little too weak. Can you see? That's good. Do this. Find an object and be mindful of the moving mind. Number 21. Congratulations. <laughs> well, you happy, you excited, you scared? This is my first time. I try to follow the practice and I'm not sure whether I've done the right thing. Longha says, good, it's the right thing, keep doing. She says, I have very weak concentration, so what do I do? Longha says, so if it's weak, just keep doing more. So I keep saying, putto, putto, putto. And then it will increase over time. Just take it easy, say putto comfortably, don't force it. If you make it happy, comfortable, then you will have the peace. It's the happiness that brings the peace, the quietness, the concentration. It's too tight, it's too stressed at the moment, can you see? Because you're trying to force and pull it back in. Keep doing this. Listen to my CDs. She says, currently I put it into MP3 and I listen it today and I don't, no, Paul says, don't just listen to it, you have to practice it. Well. She says, I cannot truly see, clearly see it yet. So what do I do? No, Paul says, can you see that your body is speaking? Can you feel that you are nodding at the moment? That's it. However your body moves, just be mindful of it. Your mind moves to do anything, just be mindful of it. If it's thinking, just be mindful of it. If the mind moves, just be mindful of it. Keep practicing. Just keep observing. And then when the time is right, just do the chanting. Say your prayers. When you say you say your prayers, it's already helping some concentration. Okay, number 19, the last one. Okay, you're from Bangkok. So, I used to say that whoever lives far away, he can't sleep in her 
So when I ask him where are you from, he's from Padre. <laughs> I want to hit him just because Padre is very, very near. Okay, so she says. Last time I got the homework since September to stay with Mantra Bhutto. However, when I got it, it seemed to have to some conflict inside. Whatever I, I used to do, was it wrong? No, Paul says, no, it wasn't wrong, it's just your mind too scattered. She says, so I kept having these conflicts in my mind until last week I had some problems and it helped. So then I go back to Puto again. No, Paul says, see, you're wasting your time since September. She says, see, since September, I felt like I didn't really practice the way you told me to, and I wasted my time. So now that when I chant Puto, I would see the mind thinking, and then when I'm thinking, the Puto disappears. But sometimes, kind of observing both simultaneously, you see, sometimes you know, I'm seeing my body moving when I'm still chanting Puto. Is it okay? No, also just don't stop saying chanting Puto, otherwise you'll be scattered for too long. I want you to chant Puto just because I don't want you to be get lost in your thoughts for too long. And then maybe your body stay with your body and now you get to see the movements of the body and mind and see the truth about the body and mind. When you are scattered, you cannot really practice. So don't, don't let go. Keep practicing your concentration, keep your Puto. So her question is, whatever I have, is it right at the home base? He says, it's actually whatever you're doing is good. She says, something that has happened in the last two years, and when I practice, I would hear something like someone is scolding at me. And the first time I heard it, I was very scared because I live alone, so there shouldn't be anyone else. So the second time I heard this, so I tried to look for the source of the sound, and then when I looked for it, and I realized it actually came from myself, someone was goading at me. Something came out from this point. So then after a while, I start to wonder what it is. No more sense. It's your mental formation. Don't get scared. Your mind is very good at fabricating things. So you start fabricating. When your mind wanders, just be mindful of your curiosity. Whatever happens, come back to your own mind. Don't try to research the objects or something that you're observing, the phenomena that arise. Come back to see what your mind feels. Keep observing your mind. Don't try to focus on the sound that's scolding at you. But the sound, actually, it sounds like someone else. It doesn't sound like me. So I was scared. No, Paul says, no, don't worry. No, you are not being possessed by any spirit. It's actually yourself. It's not a ghost. Don't, don't worry. The ghost is getting the reputation hurt because of this. Okay, can you see that you're mine right now? A moment ago, it's different already. Just before coming here, she says, before coming here, I was really suppressing myself. Okay, that's it. <laughs>